guys, we have a new hot water heater. It's an instant hot water heater we're gonna be using to replace our propane six gallon hot water heater. There's a lot of factors that go into it and I've seen about two videos on how to install this. Uh, but I'm just going to jump into this like I've jumped into every single RV project that we've had. I'm going to tear into it and see how we can make this thing work for us. So let's jump right in and do it. So one of the first things you're going to need to do, all of this is for safety, of course. You need to make sure that your LP gas is turned off. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. We're good to go there. Next thing you need to do is go inside and make sure that your water pump is switched off. The one thing that you don't want to have is water pumping out of your lines while everything is going. After that, double check to see where your DC power is supplied. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm just going to disconnect that from the fuse box. So I'm right here at the DC fuse box. We do have the DC power wired to our solar batteries. I'll explain that in a future video. But what I need to do is I basically need to cut off the power at the source. So I'm going to take the hot wire out of the DC fuse box so that there's not going to be any electricity flowing to the hot water heater and that will guarantee that I'm not going to shock myself I would encourage you guys to do the same thing okay I just cut off the DC power supply so I'm gonna go ahead and check my main light here in the living room and yes it is completely off so I can be guaranteed there's not going to be any electricity that's going to be messing with me while I install this new hot water heater so now is probably a good time to talk about why we're replacing this hot water heater. Well, all last year when we were living in this RV full time, keep in mind living in it full time versus just camping in it, there are some certain things that you can uh, let go, but when it comes to living in it full time, there are comforts that you kind of just need, and hot water is one of those things that we discovered we needed. And one of the things with this old hot water heater is it would have trouble igniting sometimes, it would also have trouble staying lit. Uh, so the hot water would not necessarily get heated up to a proper temperature and sometimes it would just overheat the water to where it would all leak out of the pressure regulator valve. Well, um, all of these things kind of led us to looking for other options, whether or not just to replace that six gallon propane tank or to go with something uh, new, new technology like an instant hot water heater. Well, we looked at the price comparison and it was like $600 for an instant hot water heater and maybe like $400 for a regular hot water heater. So we definitely weighed out that price difference and without a doubt the convenience that it's going to give us is going to outweigh all of that cost. So that's why we went with the instant hot water heater. But now that I've said that, um, I've got to go read the instruction manuals <laughs> for it. I haven't read it yet. So I'm going to do that really quick. I'm going to open the box, see what I've got and see what I need to buy so that I can install this properly. And then I'll get back to you here in just a second. So I went through a lot of those instructions and it looks like I'm not going to have the time to do everything I want to get done today. Um, I also checked and looked at the um, door that covers the hot water heater. The hot water heater itself is the correct unit that I need, but I need a specific door to fit my specific RV hot water heater so it can retrofit it. Um, this door I looked up is meant for a suburban hot water heater and I guess they have multiple different doors with very confusing drawings on it and everything like that. So what I did was I measured this dimensions of what this door that I need is and I went on and looked at a million different products that they have and I found one that will work but I need to order that so that we can actually install it and make sure this is waterproof uh, before I go ahead and put the hot water heater in. So I'm going to continue this video on another day and we are going to get that ordered in so that we can show you guys how to replace this hot water heater. All right guys, it's a few days later and a couple degrees cooler but we finally have the new door ordered in. This one will actually fit our old unit. This one's made for an Atwood brand hot water heater. The other one we bought, I think, is designed for a suburban brand hot water heater. Anyway, while we were waiting for the door to ship, uh, basically I read up on all the instructions, so I kind of have about 90% uh, understanding of what's going to go on today. So let's jump in, continue on with where we left off, and let's get this new water heater put in. So as you guys know, I've completely shut off the main valve to the propane. I've shut off the water pump so there's no pressure in the lines. And I've also completely disconnected the power to the DC fuse box so there is no electricity running through the RV. So there's no chance of anything going wrong. 
cross your fingers. <laughs> but what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna actually remove all of the water from this tank and to do that there's a pressure relief valve right here and then there's a drain valve right down here. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna relieve all the pressure out of this hot water tank by opening up the pressure relief valve Okay, so normally water would be spraying out of this pressure relief valve because there's usually pressure in the lines, but um, I think I've already relieved this quite a few times over the past couple of days. So just be prepared, water will shoot out of there, so just stand out of the way and just let it do its thing. Now that that pressure is all out of the tank, I'm gonna get a socket wrench, get this drain valve unplugged so I can let all the water out, and we will be done draining the tank. All right, you guys know what I was talking about that 90% understanding earlier? Well, there's a wing nut thing that's on here and that's part of the 10% that I don't know what it is. It could be nothing, but I'm gonna unscrew it and see what happens. Uh, it's kind of like pushing the red button. <gasps> I do it all the time in the RV. Okay guys, so I unscrewed and re-screwed that wing nut thing and it is a permanent part of that drain plug. So uh, that prevents me from getting a socket wrench in there to un undo the drain plug. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna use a crescent wrench, but to get in there, I need to get this little vent thing out of the way. It's only attached in two different spots, one here and one there, hopefully. And then I'll take that out so I can get some leverage and get this drain plug unscrewed with a crescent wrench. Boy, older RVs can never be easy. <laughs> okay, so that is a much better view of the drain plug. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my crescent wrench and just try to get as much leverage as I can. There it is. Now that that's done and all the water is drained out of the tank, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the gas line, the hot and the cold water lines, as well as the electrical to this unit so that I can unscrew it and remove the full unit and then keep moving on with this project. So let me go ahead and disconnect all of those. The gas line is right here. The hot and the cold water lines are in the back and I'm gonna have to see where the electrical power is. So uh, let's go ahead and get that done. I'll start with the gas line. And Oh man, there you go. That's loose. I'm gonna go ahead and tuck that guy back there. Sweet. All right, now let's go inside underneath the bed uh, where I can get to the water lines and also to the electrical. Okay, I'm here underneath the bed in the back of the RV and there is the hot water tank right there. That's the back of it. Uh, down here, I believe is the cold line and up here, I believe is the hot line. The reason I think this is the hot line is because I think this is a bypass valve for that. So um, this being the hot line, that being the cold line, I'll make sure to remember that when I'm reinstalling that on the new hot water heater. Anyway, I'm gonna disconnect these uh, so I can get the unit out first and then I'm gonna move to the electrical, disconnect the electrical and I'll get everything disconnected so we can completely remove this old unit and reinstall the new one. All right, so I've got the hot water line and the cold water line completely disconnected so they're free from the old unit. Now I've gotta get all the electrical lines free and I'll be able to take this guy out. Okay guys, so I've got the electrical lines right here. I made sure to take a photo of the electrical lines. It looks like I have a red, a blue, and a green that are coming from the RV to the unit. And from the unit, I've got a black, a blue, and a green. They wired it black to red, blue to blue, and green to green. So I made sure to take a photo of that so I can remember it for the new unit. And I also noticed that there are some other lines that are coming from the unit, which I'm assuming are the remote lines for the ignition switch. Let me go ahead and get the ones inside done, then I'll take you back outside, see where those actually lead, and then hopefully we'll have everything disconnected. <laughs> now that that's all done, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna um, undo all of these little screws on the outside of this unit, use a putty knife and a hammer to kind of loosen up all the butyl tape and the tar, tar tape and the caulking around this so I can remove the unit a little bit and kind of see where those lines actually go. Okay, so I just found something out that I misread from the inside and I didn't really realize the way that it was wired until it's fully out, but let me explain this. So there's a red, a blue, and a green line coming from the unit 
into the RV and I'm gonna take you guys back inside that you so that you can see how the RV was actually wired so let's go inside and I'll show you guys what I kind of mixed up so now as you can see the unit is partially removed and we can see a lot better what's going on back here so the red the blue and the green line that were on the left before those are actually coming from the hot water heater itself and the black, the blue, and the green line are coming from the RV. Earlier, I had thought that these black and uh, white lines were actually connecting to the hot water heater, but I realized that this is actually just part of the RV DC system, and I had just gotten these two holes mixed up, but I didn't know that until I got the unit partially removed. So now we have everything completely disconnected, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the unit. Okay. Cool. Okay guys, now that I've got the unit fully out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my putty knife, I'm gonna go around and clean off all the edges, and also what I'm gonna use is mineral spirits. It's a solvent-based thinner. Uh, be sure to be in a ventilated area and have gloves on when you use it because it's pretty strong stuff, but I'll get it all cleaned off and then we'll be ready to go ahead and see what we need to do for the new unit. I can't believe I'm doing this again. The second door, the second one that I bought, fits perfectly width and height wise, but look, the vent is off-centered. I don't know what is going on. I, like, I'm at a loss for words. I'm gonna have to go online, do some more research, and find out why this door doesn't work. But just to give you an idea of what I'm having to deal with, the places that I'm buying the product from, they have like cartoon drawings of these doors so it gives no dimensions on where this hole is no dimensions on where these vents are all it does is give you the dimensions of the actual thing and this one is specifically designed to fit a six gallon atwood hot water heater which is what we had so we're gonna have to pause video production I'm gonna I'm gonna go get some research done and hopefully I'll find something out to update you guys on I'm back and we've ordered a new door. It's about two weeks later, and we're finally ready to get this hot water heater installed. Uh, as you see right here, we made a makeshift cover for our hole in the RV, and the reason that is is because we had to go on a week and a half trip to North Carolina, uh, mainly because Jenny's brother and sister-in-law had to go house shopping in Dubai. Yes, that Dubai. And we had to take their two kids three dogs and a gerbil on a road trip to North Carolina for 10 days while they did house showings for their house here in Nashville. Uh, so <laughs> long story short, uh, I've got a new door and I'm pretty sure it's the correct door that we need. So I'm going to dry fit this hot water heater, make sure everything works. And then I'm going to explain to you guys how the door systems work with these Girard tankless hot water heaters. Awesome. The door fits perfectly and I'm so excited. I don't have to order another door. So I have officially solved the riddle when it comes to the doors for these tankless hot water heaters. It is so confusing online because Gerard does not do a very good job of uh, explaining to you what the codes mean and how you can properly find the right door for your original hot water heater that you had in your RV. So if you guys have any questions, I will have a very detailed description of what you need to know down in the video description below, just to hopefully save you guys the time and effort that we've had to put in trying to get the door that works best for our RV. So I'm going to roughly explain what we what was what happened. We have the second version of the Gerard tankless hot water heater. That's the GSWH stands for Gerard System Water Heater and it's the it's, it has a 2 next to it so it's the second generation. I didn't know that there was a first generation uh, unit but the 2 stands for the second generation. So if you do buy the second one, make sure that your door has a 2 in the product coating. So that's just a quick tip number one. But the first door that we ordered, we actually ordered for a Suburban uh, brand hot water heater. We have an Atwood brand. So that was a mistake that I made. I probably should have read the description of the door a little bit further, uh, but that was just a, a mistake that I made and I will totally fess up to that. But when it came to the second door that we bought, it was specifically designed for an Atwood six gallon hot water heater. But the only problem was is the product code had a one in front of it, which means that door was designed for the first generation model of this hot water heater. 
But again, if you need any of these uh, details, all of them will be in the video description below. So hopefully it will save you guys a lot of time and energy having to buy the right door. So we've got everything ready to go. Let's go ahead and jump back into today's project. I'm gonna get this thing installed and I'm so excited to see how it works. The next step in the process is I need to make sure that this new hot water heater is framed in tightly so that it doesn't move around. Uh, and basically what I'm going to use for that is what's called sticker wood. Um, these are stickers that they use uh, to transport big pallets of wood uh, at basically big box retailers. So um, they're free. Uh, they're usually in the scrap bins in the lumber section of either Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, but I talked to the guy there and they actually throw them away. Uh, so it's good to recycle the wood, use this stuff. Um, this is actually what we use to frame out most of the water damage spots in our RV. Probably about 75% of our spots we use this wood and it's been perfect for what we needed. So don't go out and buy new wood. Just use these. I think they're just two by twos and uh, I'm going to get this frame put in there so that this thing doesn't shake around and move around when we're driving. And once I'm done, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, guys, so I've got my piece of sticker wood here. This is the piece that's going to be my added frame piece and I've got two corner brackets already attached to it. What I did was I decided to attach the corner brackets on that little indented piece which will give me a little bit more wiggle room when it comes to actually screwing it to the original frame. So I'm going to go ahead and install this piece and see if I can't get my drill in and gr drill two more three quarter inch screws on each side so that this guy will be my added frame piece that will prevent the hot water heater from moving around. So when you're adding this new frame piece in, there is a little bit of vinyl exterior wood uh, as well as like panel wood that you need to make sure to avoid. Uh, when you're attaching these and screwing these in, you want to make sure that you're screwing them into the original framework. Uh, so it's a little bit, maybe like a quarter of an inch inside of the actual vinyl siding here, uh, depending on which kind of RV you have. But just make sure you're attaching it to a solid frame piece. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get that done and then we should be able to go ahead and get this thing hooked up. Okay, I've got the new frame piece added in. I wanted to take the hot water heater out to make sure that it was removable just in case there's anything that we need to replace or change about it in the future. Um, but yeah, the frame piece is nice and solid. As you can see, I'm tugging on it and it is nice and solid on there. So it's really gonna help that hot water heater from moving around in that bigger hole. So before I attach the door to the unit, I need to layer a layer of butyl tape around this outside edge so that when we screw the door to the siding, uh, there's a nice watertight seal and then once we get that door screwed onto the siding then we can attach the unit to the door. Okay we got the door attached to the wall the outside of the RV so the door is secured to the RV now we need to secure the door to the unit itself as well as the framework so there's eight screw holes uh, that I'm gonna be attaching the door to the um, hot water heater with and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually screwing into those but I'm gonna make sure that I angle it uh, in so that I'm, I'm actually gripping onto the framework as well. So not only am I screwing the door to the hot water heater, but I'm screwing the door to the framework uh, underneath as well. So let's get that done and then everything should be nice and snug and we can work on getting the plumbing, the LPG, and the electrical back together. Okay guys, so I decided to remove the door part, the hinge part of the door, uh, so that I could get better access to removing the excess butyl tape. What I'm going to do is just take a scraper tool, uh, scrape around here, get all that excess butyl tape done uh, out and out of the way so it's nice and cleaned up. And then once we're pretty much done with everything, I'm going to take a bead of caulking and put it around there so that it's nice and watertight. All right, guys, we got the hot water heater installed. Uh, this is day number four. We had to stop filming last night because there was such poor lighting conditions uh, that it was just not going to be good for you guys. But we are going to show you all of the connections in the back of the hot water heater so you guys can know how to connect yours up to your specific RV. But as you see, uh, we had reattached the door. Uh, we decided to not caulk around the butyl tape around the edge of the unit, uh, mainly because this door fits so snugly up against the siding of the RV that um, we were scared that the door was going to get stuck on the caulking. We think the butyl tape is going to be waterproof enough, but we're going to monitor that as we live in it to make sure that there's no leaks or anything that occur from not caulking around that. And if it does, we will go ahead and do it. But we decided to go against it and we feel like it looks awesome. Everything fits perfect and the hot water heater is running amazingly well. So let's jump back behind the hot water heater. I'm going to show you all of those connections and give you guys a step by step on what you need to do to test the hot water heater and make sure that it's going to work out for you guys. 
one of the first things I needed to do when reattaching the lines in the back was put Teflon tape on both the hot and the cold water connections on the back of the hot water heater. If I could give you any recommendation, I would say do this before you even install the unit because it gives you a lot more space and room to work with. It was really hard getting the Teflon tape on after the unit was installed. The next thing I did was install the hot and cold water lines. Based on my research, bypass valves are not needed on tankless hot water heaters. So all I needed to do was cut the cold water line shorter so that the attachment would fit nice and clean on the back of the hot water heater. To splice the two lines back together on the cold water side, I used a shark bite 3 8 inch straight coupling and that worked out perfect. You just need to make sure that you really clamp it down tight on there and uh, it creates a watertight seal so you have basically a straight pipe again. When I was trying to attach the cold water line, I did realize that I needed more space cut out for the lines, the electrical and the water lines that went in between the wall there. And basically what I had to do was uh, drill a new hole behind there so that I could cut it out with a saw and create a little bit more space for all those lines. After the hot and cold water lines were officially installed, all I did was very gently curve the copper LPG line so that it would attach cleanly on the back of the hot water heater. I just used a crescent wrench to tighten that down and it fit perfectly. When I was done with that, it was time for me to jump in on the wiring. Gerard specifically says this is not a DIY project and it doesn't give very good wiring instructions. So what I needed to do was call my friend Jared Gillis over at Less House More Living. He's the guy who inspired us to install this new hot water heater. And I wanted to see exactly how he wired it. Hello? Hey Jared. Hey, how's it going? Hey man, how are you? Doing pretty good. Good. I was are do you have a free moment to talk? Yeah, go for it. Cool. I was uh I'm in the process of installing that switch for the water heater. And I was okay. just I was just kind of curious as to how you did yours just cuz I want to make sure I'm doing mine right. The main question that I had when I was talking with Jared was there was an extra blue wire uh that I didn't really know where it went. Your wire colors might be a little different than ours, but I wanted to just give you guys a visual so you can see how it's officially hooked up. I have the red line attached to the black line and then I have the black line attached to the green and the blue line. Wiring it like this allows us to still use the old hot water heater switch to remotely turn on and off the unit. The next thing I needed to do was remove the faceplate on the user control panel so that I could attach it underneath the bed near the hot water heater in the back. I screwed a hole through the wall and I mounted it close to the hot water heater so that I could wire the two black lines that came out of the user control panel to the two blue lines that were coming out of the back of the hot water heater. The last thing I needed to do was to turn on the water pump and the LPG lines uh, so that I could check to see if there were any leaks. Once I found out there were no leaks, I reconnected the 12 volt power to the fuse box and then I was able to power on the unit and test it out. The unit immediately engaged whenever we turned on the hot water in the shower, but what we realized is the half gallon per minute aerator that we have on our kitchen faucet doesn't allow enough water flow to actually trigger the hot water heater. So what we needed to do was remove the half gallon per minute aerator and reattach the original aerator that came with this faucet and everything worked out perfect. All right guys, that's gonna do it for us today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to install a Girard hot water heater. If you did, hit that like button down below. That lets YouTube know that we're putting out quality content. Also, if you have any questions or comments, hit us up in the comment section below. And as always, I will see you on the next video. If you look at this thing, it doesn't line up with, it doesn't line up with the, that was bad.